Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. We're looking at Connell Drift and we're looking at uh, Alfred Wegener's evidence and the rejection to his theory. So, as we learned in previous videos, Wegener's um, theory was put out to the world in 1912. And he started to figure things out on his uh, various um, Greenland expeditions through his university in Germany. And he was looking at a lot of uh, meteorological um, uh, science, uh, experiments, that kind of thing. And he saw the icebergs float off and, and carve off from Greenland ice sheets and saw the icebergs floating. And he thought, oh, that looks familiar. That looks that could be happening with the uh, the continents. And because the puzzle fit was a on the shape of the continents between South America and Africa were already known for pretty much three centuries, um, he started to collect this, these evidence. And he found over the course of the three years from 1915, he found five key bits of evidence, which is discussed in previous videos. Now, when it was translated into different languages, obviously he had this first one public, uh, published in German, when it was translated into English and French in 1924, that's where it started to get more, let's say, recognition of this very, uh, very outstanding kind of uh, theory. When I say outstanding, I mean different. I mean it's way out there, like outside the box. A lot of very well-known and uh, accomplished geologists and scientists you know, initially thought this was very, very strange, very out there, especially the American ones. And there was a lot of rejection, a lot of rejection to his theory. And people were saying that, uh, you know, just by the evidence that there wasn't enough evidence and that the evidence was circumstantial and a lot of things, even though Wegner had done a lot of work into collecting this data and providing the evidence. So well, obviously the five bits of evidence looked at surface features, be it rock ages, fossil features, uh, pretty much on, when I say surface, I mean in the crust. And looking at glacial deposits, looking at the puzzle fit and the shape of the conal margins, how they fit together and looking at uh, the age of the rock, orogenies, and the central Pangean mountains. Now, what Wegener failed to really prove, and this is a big downfall for him in terms of the, the scientific method, he couldn't prove how, how these continents moved. Because you're, you know, obviously in 1924, without the use of satellites, about the use of the internet or any kind of like broader scheme for, for viewing the earth or remote sensing, different wavelengths. You know, continents are, are millions and millions and millions and millions of tons of rock. And to move them is, is a very hard uh, idea to process in your mind. And especially for scientists, let alone the average person who doesn't have that knowledge. So there was two thoughts that the continents kind of carved their way through the ocean floor. Like icebergs, uh, like, like a ship would carve, like an ice breaker ship would carve through an ice sheet, just kind of push through the ocean floor. And the other theory that Wegener had was tidal forces, the force of the sun, the moon, um, applying on the Earth's surface. Now, we know that uh, the gravitational pull, the moon, the sun, has an effect on the oceans in particular with the tidal ranges of certain areas of the, of the world, uh, like Bay of Fundy in Canada, where there's a, a tremendous change between high and low tide. And also we know that there's a slight change in, and, more, and configuration to the actual solid Earth based on the gravity effects of the moon and the sun. But the tidal forces of the oceans are more, more apparent. But he thought the tidal forces were basically pulling the continents 
um, across the Earth's surface. So these two are the things that he he kind of discussed with his colleagues, and his colleagues were unimpressed. They were not convinced. There was enough scientific data. It was all just theory. It was all just an idea, you know, thinking out loud. What they couldn't understand is what was below. So here's my surface. They couldn't really put the crust. And then we have our mantle, and we know Moho separates that. So what they couldn't really understand is what happens in the mantle. Now, in 1928, about two years before Wegener died, uh, Arthur Holmes did suggest convection currents could persist or uh, exist in the mantle, and based on the seismic wave knowledge that had come around in the early 20th century, um, between the Moho and other things, the velocity of the waves. So there was ideas that we knew combustion currents worked on the surface, the flow of liquids and gases, but we kind of applied it in 1928 to the mantle. So there was an idea, the starting point of an idea of how to prove Wegener's theory, but Wegener died in 1930 whilst on an expedition in Greenland, unfortunately, and wasn't able to really see the, the progression of his theory. All he really saw was for the six years after it was published in different languages, he saw the rejection, the controversy, and all of the critics writing about his theory, much to their, much to his uh, unfortunate um, inability to see it. Connell Drift was the starting point of plate tectonics and the starting point of this new understanding of our Earth's crust, deformation, and movement through history. So in 1937 was another big extended um, and refined idea of uh, Wegener's Connell Drift, and that was done by Alexander Dutuy. Sorry, and my French is is horrible. But the, uh, again, you see examples of various scientists around the world starting to use Wegener's theory of Connell Drift, see the application, start to make connections with the Earth's mantle, convection currents, and the ability to look at the crust of the continent and the oceans as somewhat separate and uh, in terms of the composition and how they moved and reacted. And it really took until the 1960s, 1960s, before they really had conclusive, concrete evidence that can be presented to the scientific community in order to really prove Wegener's theory. And we'll get onto this uh, as a future video, and this will be on seafloor spreading. So if you like the video, uh, like to make a comment, that's great. Uh, please subscribe. And uh, look forward to seeing you in, in a different video.